The buffer overflow attack is one of the most interesting and a very powerful attack technique. In this video, we are looking at the task 3 of the set UID version of buffer overflow. To be specific, this is the 32-bit program or level 1 of buffer overflow. And I'll talk mostly about how to perform the attack, not the why. So if you want to learn about buffer overflow, the concept itself, please refer to the textbook, which is an excellent resource. All right, I have listed the commands on the left hand side, which should be very helpful to you. You can also find them on the lab instructions. So let's get started. First, we'll have to get the lab set of files downloaded, which I have already done. I have also renamed the files to lab2 buffer lab setup. It could look different when you download them from the lab website. All right, so we'll have to go inside that folder first. So within the lab setup folder, you'll have two subdirectories, code and shell code. We'll go inside code first. And inside code, we have stack.c program. So let's open that. This is our program where we have buffer overflow. So within stack.c, the place where buffer overflow is taking place is that string copy function. And this is inside the bof function. So remember those. All right, now as part of the experiment setup, we have to disable the address space randomization. So that is the first command. So let's disable that. And this is a countermeasure against buffer overflow. So for level one, you can disable this. The next one is relinking our shell to ZSH from dash, which is another countermeasure that we are disabling before we start the attack. Now the next step is to run your make file. So before you do anything with the make file, you may have to change the L1 through L4 values within the make file depending on the instructions provided to you. I'm going to open the make file to show you where those changes have to be made. Now you can open the make file using gedit. And at the top, as you can see, have L1 through L4. So these are some different values uh, compared to the default value that you get the lab files from. And depending on this value, your offset will be different. I'll talk about this later in the video. All right, now the next step is to run make. So simply type make, enter, and we get all these executable files. And they're also converted to set UID, which is very nice. And there are level one through level four. We will focus on stack L1 in this attack. So we have to start our debugger now. And we debug the debugging mode enabled executable file. So GDB is the program to start the debugger. Now before you can start the debugging, you need to create this empty bad file. And right now when I use touch, the bad file that we got is zero bytes long. So it's empty and then you can start the debugger. When we start the debugger, then you create a breakpoint. So B, B O F. So B O F is the function name where we have the buffer overflow. Then run and next. At this time, you should see a string copy. So we want to arrive at this point where we have the buffer overflow. Then we will print the address of EBP register, so P and then dollar sign EBP. We need another piece of address, which is the beginning of our buffer. So P and then ampersand buffer. Finally, you're going to need the difference between those two addresses. So the address of EBP minus the address of the buffer. And this will give us the offset. Now, depending on the values that you saw in the make file, L1 through L4, this offset can be different. So the default, with the default settings, I think you'll get 108, 
for me it's going to be a little bit different so i get 128 and we are done with the debugger so you can quit out of the debugger and we'll start our next phase after this we'll take a look at the exploit.py file which is creating our payload or the bad file now before we can create our bad file or we fill up the actual exploit.py file let's talk about the overall structure of it so i'll open the exploit.py file in our text editor and i'll talk about how to fill this up so at the top we have this shell code these are some dummy code we need to replace this with the shell code for 32-bit program so this is already given in the lab instruction or you could also find this in the shell code folder that comes with the lab setup files i'll show you how to get that so go inside that shell code folder and open that c file and so we have two pieces of shell code one for 64 bit and another for 32 bit so we want the 32 bit of course for this attack so we'll copy this and then bring it back to our exploit.py file so put this where you have the shell code okay we are done after we put the shell code then the next step is to fill in the number at line 16 so this indicates where we are starting to fill that shell code so let me show you a diagram and this will help you to understand the overall structure of our exploit.py file you can see the stack frame of the function bof here we are looking at bof because that's where we have the string copy function so that is where we are creating that buffer overflow now the total size of bat file is 517 so that is the number we chose in the python file now out of that 517 we are going to put our shell code towards the end now you could start somewhere around the 400 mark so that would be good it you could change this a little bit but the basic idea is between 400 and 517 you will have the shell code so towards the end our bad file starts from the bottom so where we have buffer and we found out the difference between ebp and buffer using the debugger so that value was 128 as a result if you have that number this is your offset you can find the difference between the return address and the beginning of the buffer by adding 4 to that number so 128 plus 4 that is where your return address is so we need that number 132 in our exploit.py file now the final piece of information that we need is the value of the return address the return address should help us to jump in that nop region between the shell code and the return address so we fill that entire space with nops and as long as we can jump anywhere in that area we will be able to arrive at our shell code so the return address should be a value which is greater than ebp because that address is more than ebp so let's we'll start with ebp plus 100 and then if needed we will increase that so this requires some guesswork just remember that we'll have to jump in that region so between shell code and return address at this point we are ready to fill up our exploit.py file we have all the information that we need to create our bad file so let's go ahead and modify our python code i'll keep the diagram on the right hand side so we'll have a reference of what we are doing so we're starting with number 16 so line 16 so this is where our shell code will start so it could be as i said a 400 should be a good starting point and then line 21 so this is our return address 
So the return address again should be something more than EBP. So we can add 100 bytes in the beginning to test if that is enough. If not, we can change that value later. So EBP plus 100. Finally, we also need to fill up the offset and this is the difference between EBP and buffer and plus 4. So, we will basically use this number to put our new return address in that location and this needs to be exactly 132. And we are all done, we will save that file and close everything here, we will jump back to our terminal. So, let us create our bad file. Now, if you remember our initial bat file was just an empty bat file, you can see the file size is 0 and where we run our exploit.py, this will be replaced by a new bat file. So, dot slash exploit.py and if I run that, the file size will go from 0 to 517. So, this is what we just created. Now, let us give it a try. Let us see if our plan was successful or not. So, we are going to run our dot slash stack L1. Oops. So, we get this illegal instruction that means the address that we put at the return address field was not correct. So, we will have to change some values in the exploit.py. So, let us change the return address to something else. So, we added 100 but maybe that was not enough. We want to go a little bit higher. So, I am going to put 200 for now and then save that file, we will try to create the bad file again and see what happens. So, you might have to try this a few times to get this right. So, save that file, run the python code again and after that try dot slash stack l1. Oh yes, so we got the root shell and you can verify this by typing in id. And yeah, we got the EUID equals 0, so which indicates we have the root privilege. You can also see that hash sign, so which also shows this is a root shell. So that is all for this video. If you have any questions or if you are seeing any errors, please put them in the comments below. I will try to address them as soon as possible. I will also include the common commands that I have used at the beginning of this video in the description box. Like and subscribe if you found this helpful and thank you.